You are watching Cold Fusion TV. Hi, welcome to another Cold Fusion video. Dagogo here. With innovations such as HoloLens and the marriage of the PC and mobile in Windows 10, it seems like Microsoft is getting back on track after some time being lost in the wilderness. For some fun, let's take a look back at some interesting facts and events in Microsoft's history that you may not have known about. Number 5. The name. Okay, so let's start simple. Where did the name Microsoft actually come from? Microsoft literally stands for Micro Computer Software. A microcomputer was a term used to describe the early personal computers in the mid-1970s. Remember, at this time, computers were still massive mainframes used in corporate business. The public didn't even have the concept of what a personal computer was. In fact, people in the computing business even thought the idea of a PC was ridiculous. For example, in 1977, Ken Oslin, founder of Digital Equipment Corporation said, there is no reason why anyone would want a computer in their home. So in fact, Bill Gates and Paul Allen were way ahead of their time to see the potential of microcomputers as early as they did in 1975 when they started Microsoft. Number four. The Microsoft sound. There's a mysterious sound that would bring most 90s kids back to their childhood for a brief few seconds. Let me play it. Where did this sound come from? The story behind it is actually quite interesting. When Windows 95 was being developed, executives commissioned music legend Brian Eno to develop a piece of music to play when the operating system started up. The piece of music became known as the Microsoft Sound. Brian Eno was chosen because he had worked with the likes of David Bowie and U2. I think I'm one of the founding fathers of the recognition that there are different ways of listening to music but it, it's been around for a long time. There are other ways of hearing music and other ways of using music. Here are some quotes by Brian. Microsoft said, we want a piece of music that's inspiring, universal, optimistic, futuristic, sentimental, and emotional, but it has to be 3.25 seconds long. I made 84 pieces. I got completely lost in this world of tiny, tiny little pieces of music. I was so sensitive to microseconds that when I'd finished and went back to working on full pieces of music, three minutes seemed like oceans of time." End quote. But there's a twist to this story. Digging a little bit deeper, we find the pinnacle of irony. As it turns out, Eno actually composed the music on a Mac. But not just this, he's actually quoted as saying, I've never used a PC in my life. I just don't like them. Number three. Microsoft Bob. Windows 95 was a smash hit and went on to become one of the most iconic pieces of software of the 20th century. But packaged with Windows 95 came a complete disaster called Microsoft Bob. Bob was an experiment by Microsoft in user interface design. It was such a colossal failure that it's almost been wiped from history. It totally went against Microsoft's core aspect of Windows 95, ease of use. Bob was supposed to be a cartoon-like interface that skinned the whole operating system. Instead of making the experience easier, users just got a slow, clunky pile of frustration instead. Oh, and one more thing. Earlier, when I said Bob had been wiped from history, that's not totally the case. Bob did actually leave something behind. That's right, Bob gave the world Comic Sans. Number two. Microsoft once saved Apple. The year is 1997. Apple was in trouble with its developers, install base, and investors. There was absolute chaos in Apple's product lines. The company had almost run themselves into the ground. Newly re-elected CEO Steve Jobs said that the company needed to strengthen its relationship with Microsoft. And uh, one has stood out uh, as a relationship that uh, hasn't been going so well, but had the potential, I think, to be great for both companies. And I'd like to uh, announce one of our first partnerships today, a very, very meaningful one, and that is one with Microsoft.
Microsoft said that they would invest $150 million in Apple stock and continue Microsoft Office support for the Mac and also help with improvements and further development. This was largely seen as the day Microsoft saved Apple. But in truth, these two seemingly generous gifts to Apple were part of a larger deal. Although Microsoft did arguably save Apple, the $150 million was actually part of a lawsuit settlement. The discussions actually began uh, because there were some uh, patent disputes. And uh, rather than, uh, I know, rather than uh, repeating history, I'm extremely proud of both companies that they have resolved uh, these differences in a very, very professional way. Number one. Microsoft has had a lot of experience with smartwatches. So as it turns out, Microsoft has already made a smartwatch 11 years ago in 2004. It was called the Microsoft Spot Watch. It was an interesting idea. It basically gave useful information like sports, news, weather and stocks over FM radio waves. But the rabbit hole goes even deeper. Before this, the Microsoft Office team worked with Timex to release arguably the first smartwatch in 1994. That's 21 years ago. The Timex data link was developed as a wearable alternative to mainstream PDAs. It could also download phone numbers from a computer. The interesting way is how it communicated with the computer. Data was actually transmitted using the light emitted by the computer's monitor. The watch was to work seamlessly with various elements of Office 95 and 98. So looking at this final fact in a broader sense, this brings us to an interesting point. On Cold Fusion, we've already seen how both smartphones and smartwatches existed two decades ago, but never really kicked off the spark that we're seeing today. The same can also be said for virtual reality. It's almost like we're living in a time where all the conceived and imagined ideas of the past are now finally feasible. It truly is great that we're the ones that are able to witness this. Okay, so that's enough from me. I hope you've enjoyed these historical gems hidden within Microsoft's past. If there's any other lesser known Microsoft facts that you happen to know, feel free to comment. If you want to see more alternative videos like this, please subscribe to Cold Fusion so you don't miss them. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you again soon for the next video. Have a good one. Cold Fusion. It's new thinking.